In order to analyze a salt, we will perform an ion exchange to convert the salt into an acid. This will allow it to be titrated with a base. Before the titration, we must regenerate the ion exchange column. This is done by running an acid through the column. Before adding the acid, be sure to lower the water level in the column to the height of the resin. Carefully add the acid to the column. Open the stopcock at the base of the column to allow the acid to flow through the resin. Never allow the solution to go below the level of the resin. The addition of acid to the column regenerates the anionic resin. Prior use of the resin left a range of cations bound to the particles. The high concentration of hydrogen ions in the acid will displace these cations, resulting in a resin that is exclusively covered in hydrogen ions. The excess acid must be flushed from the column before the analysis can begin. This is done by rinsing the column with significant volumes of pure water. It is important to test the column effluent to be sure all the acid has been removed. Collect a small volume of liquid and add some methyl red indicator to it. If the liquid remains red after a drop of sodium hydroxide has been added, the column is not yet rinsed fully and requires further rinsing. When the column is ready, the salt sample can be added. The ion exchange process is done most rapidly when the sample solution is very small. Therefore, you should try to dissolve your salt in the smallest volume of water possible. Lower the level of water in the column to the height of the resin before you add the salt solution. Carefully pour the solution in order to minimize the disruption of the resin as it is added. It is crucial that every drop of solution be added to the column, so rinse the beaker and add the rinse to the column. Repeat this several times. Once all the solution has been added to the column, open the stopcock and collect the effluent in a beaker or flask. Keep all the liquid that is collected from this point on. Once the water level in the column reaches the height of the resin, add some pure water to continue to flush the salt solution through the column. As the salt solution flows through the column, the ion exchange will take place. This time, the cations from the salt will displace the hydrogen ions bound to the resin, resulting in an acid eluding from the column in place of the salt. Once again, the effluent will need to be tested to see if all the acid has been collected. To do this, a volume of effluent is collected and a drop of methyl red indicator is added to it. If a drop of base does not change the color of the solution, more acid remains on the column. It is crucial to both record the volume of base as well as keep all the acid that has been collected in these fractions. If the fraction is found to be acidic, add it to the titration flask and rinse the beaker thoroughly before collecting the next fraction. Repeat these steps as needed until a fraction passes the test. When a fraction turns yellow with the addition of a drop of base, it has passed the test. This indicates that all the acid has been removed from the column and the titrations can proceed. Before starting the titration, add the fraction of effluent that passed the test to all the other fractions. Remember to rinse the beaker thoroughly to ensure that all the solution has been transferred.